We recently released a brand new version of Noodle. Now this is by far one of the biggest updates in a while. So I wanted to walk you through the release notes and show you some of the updates in Noodle as well. So first off, the major biggest feature of them all is Cloud Functions. I'm gonna show that at the end. So let's scroll down here and see what the next thing is. A brand new design. So let's have a look at that. So I've opened Noodle here in one of our own projects, which is actually the console where you log in and manage your workspaces and so forth. So this part of Noodle is built in Noodle. So first off, you can see that the preview is now integrated into the editor like this. It's not a floating window anymore, although you can still get that back. Now there are a few different modes here. We have the vertical split, great for desktop and laptops and those kind of screen sizes. Uh, if you want to work more on a mobile form factor, you can do a vertical split like this. Or if you prefer a floating window like before, in previous versions we have that as well. Now you can lock uh, the preview to specific resolutions, which is also a new feature. So here for instance, I can lock it to uh, like a standard mobile phone kind of iPhone size. If I click on that, um, the preview will be locked to the specific resolution like this. And if my screen is too small to cover it, I can now pan around within the preview, which is great for bigger screen sizes. Like maybe I want to look at a 1080p screen. I can do that like this as well. And this is very useful for, for a lot of cases. One is if you're working on like a desktop app on a smaller screen factor or smaller form factor, like a smaller 13 inch laptop, then it becomes much easier to see what you're working on. I can also zoom in and out like this. All right, but I'm going to do fit viewport, which means the standard like responsive mode and keep it like this. Another new feature is the design mode. Now this is very similar to the inspect feature we had before, but we plan to add many more features to the, to the design mode. Now if I enable that and I hover with my mouse over any visual element, I will see the outline of it. And if I click on it, Noodle will select that specific node. The opposite or the reverse is also true. If I select a node here, then design mode will keep that node highlighted. So I know which node I'm working on. There's also a new thing down here that shows you the hierarchy of the com current component you're looking at. So I'm currently looking at the login component, which is in the login folder, which is in the sign up and in uh, sheet up here. So it makes it a little bit easier to orient yourself and know where you are within the product. And then if I, if I open another component, so maybe I open this one, double click on that, then I can click down here to get back to the previous component. Now up here, we have a few new tools. So you can click here and you can see all of your routes and pages within your application. So if I want to jump directly to reset password, I can click here and I will go there directly. And another change here is if I click refresh, previous versions of Noodle will throw you back to the start page. That's not the case anymore. If I refresh, I will refresh uh, the current route. So if I'm at the sign up and I hit refresh, I, I'm still at the sign up. And another new feature is if I interact here, so let's go to preview mode, go to sign in, reset password, and then I hit back. Now this works just like a browser would, basically your navigation history back and forth. All right, uh, other significant updates. Let's go back to the release notes so I don't miss anything. Update a version control interface. Yes, so um, first off, we have a few old pop-ups that have been moved to panels. So for instance, we have the collaboration panel and the cloud services panel, which used to be up here. They're now here and work similarly to how they worked before uh, with some uh, updated design. And if I click on version control, now this is a brand new version control panel that has a lot of new features. Uh, it allows you to use uh, or to access more of the underlying functionality of Git, which Noodle is using and is embedding. Uh, one of the biggest changes is that you can go back in history and see historic changes. You used to only be able to see changes you've made and changes you're about to pull down from your team members. But now you can click on 
historic changes like this one for instance and see exactly what has been changed and I can click on these and see what did change in this particular component in this particular commit another new feature is I can click on any node that's been changed and Noodle will show you what has been changed within the node as well so in this case uh, padding was deleted this is mostly useful for function nodes and script nodes and those kind of nodes rest nodes you can also see changed files, changed product settings, changed head code, and a lot of other things that uh, weren't visualized before as well. All right, what else do we have? We have an updated, more complete JavaScript API. So there used to be um, a lot of things you can do within the visual nodes that you couldn't do in JavaScript, uh, but now we've implemented APIs for all of those different kinds of features. So for instance, if you wanna work on records, uh, delete query records, uh, create records, and so forth. You can now do that directly from JavaScript. You can also access users to log in, log out, uh, sign up. There's a few new features like you can uh, become a, a specific user if you know the session token and so forth. Add files, delete files, uh, call cloud functions, uh, a lot of new uh, functionality available from JavaScript. All the lessons have been updated. Uh, so these are all, all brand new, and I would recommend anyone, including existing users, even if you're a veteran user, to run through these. They explain a lot of the new features, uh, but also best practices, and just have a lot of useful information within them. Uh, there's also new product templates that show some of the new functionality with Cloud Functions, and uh, together with a guide, that is also also very useful to understand the new features. Now, the again, the biggest feature by far are the cloud functions. So I've created a, a very simple product here to showcase them. So cloud functions is a new feature where there are new components that now run on the server on the back end. So all of these components you used to create in, in, in Noodle or are creating in Noodle in this panel they're running on the front end on your user's device. And there are some restrictions or rather some, uh, some things you, you cannot really do when you run from a web browser. Uh, one of them is to embed secret API keys and things like that, because if those are in the front end, your users will be able to extract them. There's also a lot of APIs and external services that don't allow browsers to interact with them. You would get something called a course error so I've created one example of an API just like that. So here's a very simple uh, screen. Let's do this split here. It's a text input and a button that's calling a cloud function I created, and that cloud function will return an image. Now this is using, uh, it's using OpenAI's image generation API that's using neural networks to generate a unique image every time I call it. So. I can type anything in here that I want an image generated from. So man slurping noodles. So let's call the cloud function. Now this runs on the server. It calls OpenAI's API. And then when it's done, it will return the response. And that's some weird looking noodles, but sort of close, I guess. So what happened here is I call this cloud function. Um, this cloud function is defined here. You can also double click on this one to, to go to this. And there's a few new things in here that are interesting. Uh, most of the nodes you're already used to are available here. Not the visual nodes, of course, because these are running on the back end. Uh, there's no, no display connected to them. Uh, but there are also two new nodes, uh, request, response. So request is a node that gets called every time or it triggers a signal every time uh, this cloud function is called together with the parameters. And just as you can on front-end components, you can also hover and inspect data and so forth on back-end components and cloud components. Now this is uh, being fed into a REST node, the same node that exists on the front-end, uh, that's then calling the OpenAI API, adding the API key, uh, formatting data like they want their um, request to look like. And then there are two things that can happen. Either it fails, and then we send a response back to the front end with a failure message um, or failure code, an optional error message. 
there's a response node for success, and there we can add parameters, in this case, the, the image URL. Now, the API key can be stored in two different ways. You can just hard code it as a string in here. That's not really recommended, but it is possible, like I've done here. Uh, you can also use a new feature called config or parameters that are saved in your cloud services. So if I open the dashboard to the cloud service, there's a new section here called config. And here I can create parameters that can be read by both front-end and back-end. But by default, these parameters will only be accessible by the back-end, by the server. Um, and this is controlled by, the, by this master key only. If that is true, front-end cannot access it. Your users won't be able to read this, uh, but your server is able to. So the reason why you would want to save your API keys in here rather than a string are twofold. First off, it's not great to save secret data uh, or sensitive data like an API key, which is might which usually is something you pay for uh, and that you need to to rely on for your application to work. If you save that in the project, that is then saved in version control, and it could be accessed by people outside of your control potentially. If you invite someone to your project, they can see your API key and so forth. Uh, even if you deleted it, because it's still there in history. Uh, but if you use a configuration node, that's not the case. It's not saved locally in your computer, it's saved in the cloud services. Another benefit of that is if you want to rotate your key, you want to update it, you can just go into your dashboard and change it, and it will instantly update. You don't have to redeploy uh, or commit a new version or anything like that. It will just instantly update and keep on running uh, with the current deploy. All right, there's a lot of different reasons why you would like why you would want to use cloud functions now these this is just two of them api keys and uh, apis like openai that aren't accessible from a browser uh, but there are also a plethora of other reasons including performance doing more advanced queries uh, a lot of security related things where you, maybe you want to um, uh, you want to query for all your users that's fine to do in the back end but if you do that on the front end uh, then that means that anyone can read your user table or user database, which is typically not a good idea. All right, that was a quick overview of uh, the new features of uh, 2.8. Please download or update if you haven't already and run through the tutorials. See you next time.